Kurt is back with another investment video. If you don't know what to do because you're new, please make that like button go blue. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm on a mission to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you're interested in investment related videos and you're new to the investment world, then please hit that subscribe button. Today, I wanted to do a very quick video on will I invest in free trade? So as you can see from this countdown clock, in three hours, 53 minutes and 15, 14, 13 seconds, the free trade um, third crowdfunding round will open. Now they're targeting to try and raise a million pounds, but I think they can overfund by up to about four million pounds. So I attended the free trade crowdfunding event for the existing customers um on a couple of days ago was it tuesday on tuesday and um they mentioned quite a few things there was a lot of really really good questions from the audience that sort of gave me a better flavor on whether i should or should not invest so you know here's some of the topics that was mentioned free free trade will be adding a further three thousand stocks um to um the platform this is coming by way of their new um, brokerage platform that they're going to be introducing at some point in the summer. So, you know, this will give free trade a lot more um, clout, I would say, because, you know, there'll be a lot more companies that we can invest in, a lot more ETFs that we can invest in. There was no definitive date set. Um, now, obviously, with technology, you know, sometimes you can set a definitive date and you cannot meet it and that could sort of cause unnecessary worry. So I kind of understand not setting a definitive date, but I think, you know, understanding that it should be coming in the next sort of three months um, uh, will be, you know, a really, really great addition. They mentioned their, their sort of four revenue streams, which is instant trades, as you guys know, paying one pound to trade instantly into the market. Um, other accounts such as ISIS, which will have a, a reoccurring uh, subscription revenue fee. They talked about introducing SIP, self-invested personal pensions, um, which I assume would also have a fee. Their basic account will remain free, but they'll introduce other accounts that will basically charge they mentioned um, taking a, a portion of the FX via their own brokerage platform that they're looking to launch at the same time they launched a 3000 stock. So currently the FX trades are um, are commissioned by the brokerage platform that they're partnered with. But when they build their own brokerage platform, they will try and keep FX, you know, low. So about sort of 0.5%, which is about a third um, of their competitors costs, which is which is really, really good. Um, but they'll obviously make a little bit of money on there. And they'll also make um, interest on the balance. Now, um, they mentioned that I think it was £30 million that Hargreave Lansdowne made just on interest alone. So, you know, that was a good kind of indication that there is a, a revenue stream even for the basic account users. So, you know, they believe they've got a better freemium model say, than, say, the likes of Spotify or other freemium models um, because it doesn't rely on adverts. But the interest on balance is something that um, those other tech companies can't leverage, which which they can obviously leverage through their assets under management. Now, in terms of revenue, they kind of called out that they're sort of less than 20k revenue a month. Um, considering that they've only got one of the four revenue streams, um, it's quite understandable. It's a bit less than what I expected because they do have 25,000 customers. So um, obviously the majority of customers are using uh, the free uh, the free trades, um, no pun intended, and they are using obviously... Um, you know they're not paying for instant trades effectively so you know they do have to try and ramp up those other revenue streams but i do think as they grow as they get more stocks then the likeliness of people uh, trading instantly uh, will therefore increase they've given themselves a 36 million pound valuation it was 18 million pound the last round four million pounds the first round um some do some people in the audience did feel it was high um, they had a rationale of how they discounted the value back based on um, assets under management and users. They used Hargreaves Landown as an example. So Hargreaves Landown has um, one billion um, in assets under management, um, which is basically cash from their investors. Um, but they've got a nine billion valuation. Interactive Investor has three hundred thousand pounds in assets under management, and they've got a three billion pound valuation. So I think they believe by having a lot of assets under management and those um, other revenue streams that I mentioned, um, it warrants a thirty six million pound uh, pre money evaluation currently. Um, in terms of their plans, they talked about expansion to Europe being their most significant plan. They've got loads of plans, but in terms of priorities, expansion to Europe. Um, they talked about the 500 million um, people per capita headroom that's there. Um, 
and also the fact that 100 million of those 500 million are millennials which is where they're going to sort of target and focus their efforts they mentioned that within the team they've got expertise in localization they've delivered on different startups previously that required localization into europe and into different regions um, which is obviously you know good to have that experience in-house but i think they're probably going to need uh, more localized experience having being a person that's delivered products into different regions um you can very very quickly you know just think you know just based off you know translating a language or something and thinking that that is going to be enough it isn't enough you need to do more um so i'm sure that when they start that journey they will probably bring on you know channel managers localization managers that will sort of help and really really embed free trade from a european standpoint they said they're not concerned with other competitors such as revolut n26 and other european bound competitors I think competitors is always um, an interesting um, paradoxical topic when you're talking about um, products and services. Um, I think if you focus on yourself and you focus on your customers um, and you deliver, you know, against your vision and expectations that your customers set for you, then, you know, competitors shouldn't really be a worry. I know there's a lot of bad press with Revolut at the moment. Um, so, yeah, there are competitors and there will probably be new incumbents into the market that might even be a, probably a bigger concern than the ones that we know today. But I think then in terms of the new incumbents, free trade will have first mover advantage. In terms of the existing competitors, I think free trade should, you know, act with integrity, focus on their reputation, focus on delivering what customers expect. And I think they'll be able to weather that sort of competitor um, storm, so to speak. Um, they talked about their CAC, which is not French for poo, but it means customer acquisition cost. Um, and they said it's low. I think it's about ten pounds. The waiting list helped, um, and so you know acquiring customers for them is is quite low. They're going to explore new marketing techniques. Um, they're going to explore things like SEO, um, sort of greenfield content, so blog content, etc. That you know helps draw people in on on sort of non branded search terms, and then obviously invest within the product. Um, I think their biggest concern is recruitment at the moment. Their biggest concern is sort of getting the right people. You know, spending a lot of time on recruitment, which then kind of detracts from you know their other activities but you know that's going to be normal in a startup environment you know you will have to focus on recruitment I think um, you know they're really focusing on engineering and sort of getting the right bodies in to then supercharge their their tech and their growth um, they've said that they've got an 18% growth rate um, in terms of deposits um, and so from a startup perspective that is quite a high growth rate which is really really good and one thing that they're going to do in the future is you know using referrals as a great way to scale so they'll introduce a referral program that should give individuals free shares should you um, refer your friends into um, free trade now you know you might have to introduce say 10 15 people to get say like a free tesla share but if you think about it that's like 300 dollars in your in your pocket right there so i think um you know, it probably won't be something as big as Tesla. It'll probably be, you know, some sort of smaller shares. But who's, who knows? Who knows? If they can give me a Berkshire Hathaway share, then I can just retire because that's like £300,000, but whatever. Um, but overall, that's the sort of main talking points. They talked a little bit about their tech stack. They talked a little bit about their previous CTO who left. I think they were very, very transparent. And I, and I think they showed us great respect in, the, in that in that respect. Um, a lot of people might duck and dive the issue. You know, they clearly said he wasn't delivering. He didn't deliver in two years. He didn't deliver a product to market. And so they brought in a new guy, Ian, VP of engineering. And, you know, now they've got an iOS and Android app within about six months, I think. So um, a lot of people talk about, OK, so your ex-CTO has gone to uh, Revolut. He's gone to a competitor. But, you know, um, from my personal standpoint, if you haven't delivered a product, like I work in product development, um, as you guys know. So if you haven't delivered a product in two years, it doesn't take two years to live, to deliver a product. So I think, you know, especially if it's from scratch and you can kind of architect it from scratch, there's a lot of, you know, services that you can buy um, and you can just sort of build a user experience around it. You don't have to, you know, you know, code every, I mean, you don't have to code every line from scratch. There'll be an element where you're coding certain things from scratch, but you can kind of, you know, use different things. And I think that's what Ian's done. You know, he's using the invest cloud, uh, Kubernetes, um, products to help you know with deployments invest cloud to help with obviously portfolio management side reconciliation all of that other kind of stuff um and and now we've got and they've got their own sort of proprietary platform the deal stream layer which they're gonna you know grow with the investment brokerage platform and you know he's hiring a lot of engineers so i think you know i'm i'm quite confident from a technical standpoint and i think you know free trades tech and free trades product experience 
um, I think is going to be cut above the rest. And I think that is what's going to sort of drive and hold them through. And they've got a great brand, great community, great um, reputant, rep, reputation um, at the current moment. Um, I know people are sort of concerned with the sort of 1.5% investment fee, um, concerned with no VCs at the moment. But I think that's a, a, a specific targeted strategy from um, the free trade boss. So um, we'll have to wait and see. Um, now, obviously, crowdfunding has a lot of risk. Um, you, you should sort of be aware of those risks. I'm still really, to be honest, reading up on a lot of those risks as well. Um, but it's nice to know that, you know, if I if I invest that if somebody else wants those shares, I can kind of sell, you know, without it going public, I can kind of sell my shares to someone else. Um, and Crowdcube might proactively let me know about people that will want. So obviously, it's an investment um, that will be, you know, a significantly, you know, higher risk than, say, putting that money into an ETF or into a stock that I actively choose myself. Um, but I have decided that I will invest in free trade. The amount I'm still toy in between i think to be honest once the doors open um once i sort of read their prospectus again um sort of when it when it comes out um a little bit early for the community guys and you know uh, at 12 o'clock or whatever i have a quick scan through it and i sort of make up my mind there in terms of the figure i'm probably looking at anything from you know zero <laughs> to about to about a thousand fifteen hundred i'm not gonna go gun ho with it i'm not gonna go heavy with it i'm not gonna be one of those individuals that puts 5k 10k in it not that i have anything against anyone that's done that i think um me personally i'm gonna take a cautious approach from a private equity standpoint i've only ever invested in monzo um and so free trade will be the second um company that i'll invest in you know prior to it becoming a public um company organization so I am going to sort of err on the side of caution, but um, I do believe that that there is um, growth and opportunity. That's why I use the product. So I feel that if it's a product that I use, similar to what I mentioned in a previous video, if it's a product that I use, why wouldn't it be a product that I invest in? So for me, um, just like I would use an Apple product and potentially invest in Apple, it's really, really no different. You know, I use this product not just because it's free, but because I believe in it. And so I will definitely invest from anywhere between zero to uh to about a thousand but once i invest i will let you guys know how much i sort of put in there um but get in the comments let me know if you plan to invest in free trade um it's opening in three hours 41 minutes and 10 9 8 seconds um but i wish the team all the success and all the best with free trade and you know if you guys decide to invest i wish you all the best with you know your investment and i hope for all of our sakes that you know they are able to grow they're able to scale they're able to reach their objectives um and we're able to make a return on investment which is the reason why we do it so get in the comments please like please subscribe and i'll catch you next time happy investing in free trade